Apple CEO Tim Cook spoke for millions when he condemned the religious freedom laws taking root in the United States in an op-ed for The Post. And when the chief of a global corporation that has more cash on hand than some nation speaks on a matter of conscience like this, folks listen. That Cook is openly gay adds to the power of his words. And of course, he's being slammed for acting on his convictions. Some of Cook's most acerbic critics are calling him a hypocrite for speaking out on gay rights at home and remaining mute abroad. But the validity of that criticism only goes so far. Apple operates stores in Hong Kong and 15 countries, including the United States. Being gay in all of those countries is not illegal. But Apple also has online stores for 109 nations in Puerto Rico. Homosexual acts are illegal in 17 of those nations. In four of them, Nigeria, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates, being LGBT may be punishable by death. So I get the rage on the right over Cook's seeming hypocrisy. If he's willing to boldly blast discrimination here, then he should do the same in nations where Apple does business and the treatment of LGBT people is horrific. Yet you'd be a fool to expect Cook to shake his fist with equal vigor in less enlightened countries. That is, unless your goal is to get him fired. Remember, Apple is a publicly traded company. His first responsibility is to shareholders who want profits. His American outspokenness could get Apple kicked out or locked out of a market, which could lead to disgruntled stockholders. Yep, this is capitalism at its ugliest and most brutal. Balancing the right thing to do by society and his employees with the bottom line is the burden Cook bears. His conscience and convictions will have to guide him as he does business with nations where who he is and many of his customers are deemed illegal. I can only hope that he pushes those governments behind the scenes when the situation arises. But branding Cook a hypocrite on this score is rather facile. I'm Jonathan Capehart, opinion writer for The Washington Post.